Today I sat down with Suki Melon from hit Netflix series Singapore Social. She's also a burlesque performer, dancer and a female activist. Actually turned out there is a lot more to Suki than meets the eye and we unpacked a lot of that on this show. Check it out, you're gonna love it. My name is Nick Nagarko and you are locked into Culture TV. For the culture, by the culture. Let's go. Suki. Hi. How are you? I am not too shabby. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you for coming down today. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. You've just we were supposed to do this about two weeks ago, weren't we? We were. Um, and what happened? I I have recovered from COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quite quite a journey, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I um. So how how was your experience? Because I know everyone's having very different experiences of yeah of this disease. What was yours like? So I thought being kind of young and healthy, it would mm. it would I knew it'd be unpleasant, but I thought it'd be kind of like the flu. Mm. And I um it was real eye opener because it was unpleasant. Um, my chest definitely felt like it was being crushed, and I couldn't. Really? Yeah, I couldn't. Um, my sense of smell and taste went. So it was it was unpleasant to be honest with you yeah. i think um uh even if you're healthy yeah it's it's really quite Were an ordeal um i wasn't scared i was just m majorly uncomfortable mm -hmm. and at that point it really made me think look it doesn't matter who you are mm. how old you are take this seriously because if yeah. it takes somebody like me out like this yeah Imagine what it's going to do for someone's mother exactly, or someone's yeah. grandmother. So yeah. I yeah, mean, I don't cool. know about you, but I've been through like a few like cycles of emotion with this like whole yeah. coronavirus thing. When it first came, like, so when it first when we first heard about it, I was in Australia at the time. Right, right. And um, everyone, everyone, and they pretty they take things like that pretty seriously over there in Australia. They do. Not Locked like us here in, in England, like so. I think it was like we came back. I was there for I was doing a tour there. I was there for a month, and it was like the last week of that tour that it was like all over the news. Mm. And a friend of mine um, that I was touring with was he's he's pretty intelligent, um, and he's he just got good insight into these things. And right. he said to me, he goes. He goes, Nick, mark my words, it's gonna have global impact. This is the big one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And he's like, put a mask on. I'm like, I'm wearing no mask, forget that. So this is in February, so this is before it's anything. Whoa. Come back to England, still like, it's in the news, but it's not serious. Casual. Two weeks later, it's like, bang, this is a big problem. Yeah. And it, so one, once I got that sense of like, this is actually a big problem, I was, I was worried and I mm. took it very, very seriously mm. for the first, certainly for the first three or four months, like I was gelling constantly i was masked gloved in tesco like i was i was taking it very seriously and i was scared but then as time went on and i thought there's no end in sight for this mm. and the cases would would dip in mm. and then i started to think all right maybe it's all right maybe we can relax a little bit that's how it gets you but then that's how it gets you look at, look at where exactly, we are now exactly so yeah i guess my message would be is that you know even if young and healthy yeah. just follow the rules yeah 100%. keep everyone safe because it's uh yeah it's hard i know a, fr a friend of mine he had it he had it really bad he was in have hospital. you had it no i've not had it my sister's had it has she yeah she yeah. was she was all right though she's like she's young and healthy as well yeah my brother-in-law had it he was a bit worse yeah. um well, we're predisposed, aren't we? <laughs> we're predisposed being yeah. asian well, you know exactly, it yeah. affects us more well so. this is this is what i don't understand like so how they say that like black and Asian yeah. people are more susceptible right. to this disease. That's correct. But Britain's got the worst death rate, death rate in the world. Yeah. India hasn't. Well, Reportedly. They, well, would they even know? <laughs> have you been, you've been there, right? Yeah, of course. There's no yeah. way they would know. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's just hard to measure, isn't it? Yeah. And even in the UK, it's hard to measure. But I think, I think the thing about the British yeah. is um, as a race, um, you know, my mom's generation are just very, very honest. Yeah. So if there's like overachiever honest, yeah. so if there's facts to be given, yeah. we'll just give all the facts yeah. to the like so your, single so person. So your mom's English? My mom is British, yeah. Right, so is my mom. And, yeah. your, and your dad's Indian. My dad's Indian, Singaporean. My, yeah, how my about dad's you? Indian, yeah. Hey, so we're the same then. Biracial. Yeah. <laughs> not many of us about, really. There's there? not many of us about, but I feel like but eventually we're we are growing. There's so a like lot eventually, more. my mom used to say when I was growing up that eventually the world will be beige. Yeah. And it will just be like olive people like yeah. us. It and will. I feel like it will. Well, you know yeah. what? It's weird. <laughs> we we were filming this. Um, we were filming like uh, like this 
documentary series in the summer and one of the the guests on that uh, a guy called pran really really interesting guy so what he does is like he he's, he's like a a consultant for diversity in the education sector mm. but one of his theories is basically that in 20 years time the mixed race community will be the largest ethnic group in the uk wow more than like more than like white english more than black british more than Asian like would be the biggest community and they're saying in he was saying in another 30 years it would be pretty much the only community so how do you feel about being biracial like how has it affected your identity and stuff um I have had a very conflicting journey with it yeah. to be honest yeah when I was a child um when I was a child I was very much I was I was a mummy's boy when mm. I was a child so the in the Indian thing was came as a bit of a shock, if you know what I mean. Mm. Like when I went to primary school, mm -hmm. I realised that I'll, I am actually different. Yeah. And that I'd say that was like the the beginning of identity crisis as being yeah, mixed yeah. race. And then I think as time went on, I became I don't know conflicted with it. Right. And then fell in love with it. Yeah. And now it's like, it's my superpower. It is, right? <laughs> but, oh, yeah, man. Absolutely the same, you know? Yeah. Growing up, I, I felt the same way. I felt yeah. like I was too brown to mm. be British and too pale to be fully Indian. Mm. So I just didn't have this identity. But then yeah. kids are so mean. Yeah. So like in Singapore, I was Michael Jackson. Yeah. Harsh. <laughs> but this is, this is yeah. the kind of thing they said. In the UK, called all kinds of names. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you feel like, well, you're, and neither country accepted you almost. Yeah. Like they did, but they didn't. Yeah. So then you're like, oh, well, I'll just say I'm a citizen of the world. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how I fit and my in. my philosophy, exactly. Messes you up. Yeah. But then eventually you kind of think to yourself, you know what, what you ignored your parents say, because my parents always used to say, don't feel sad because you have the best of both worlds. Yeah. And I used to be like, oh, I have the worst of both worlds. This yeah. is rubbish. <laughs> I, no, I don't that's fit exactly, in. That's exactly what I used to think. But now yeah. I think, hell yeah we mm. have the best of both worlds yeah, you know definitely. we really do yeah. and i think it takes like it wasn't until I, I was like a teenager that i really started to to embrace it yeah when i, I felt the benefits of it mm -hmm. but i think as a as a child you just it's we, we're, we're very tribal as children aren't we yeah we are and we want to be a part of this group or that group yeah, yeah. and i remember i remember i first went to india when i was eight and um so this is like three years into my identity crisis from starting primary school sort of thing. And I was feeling very, I was feeling very much like the Asian kid mm. at primary school up until this point. Mm. Got on the plane to India and I've never felt so white in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. It was like, oh my God, I'm the white kid. Yeah. It was weird. It's crazy. And they were like saying like, well, oh, because you're white, you know, like you stay out of the sun. I'm like, Put me in the sun, I need sun. <laughs> it's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's always been the same, but it's always been the same with me, like going back to India and meeting all my relatives, because my relatives still, like a massive proportion of my yeah. relatives still in India. I have a house in India, so yeah. a family home. It is like home, but yeah. like you say, you still feel like an imposter in your own culture. It's yeah. so weird. It really is it weird, is isn't it? It is so mad, but um, yeah, eventually but you kind of come to terms with it is the future you know what's you know what's interesting did you know that there is have you heard about the anglo indians right which is technically us which is technically us but yeah. slightly, dif slightly, slightly different slightly different so they <laughs> so they basically so you know the british went to india in like yes, 200 course. years ago yeah so anyway the whole race of people basically yeah. exactly like us mm -hmm. were created by the British soldiers marrying yeah, Indian women right but then there was race laws yeah. back then that prevented the new mixed race race essentially mm. to marry into Indian society but also into British society mm. so they only had to marry within each other mm. which created and this is there's millions of there was well I think it's I think it's faded out a bit now but there was a, there was millions of this commute people in this community in India from like the 1800s right through until partition um in 48 or whenever it was and um yeah, they were totally sectored off from both British society and Indian society, but mm. they had English names because their fathers right. were primarily, the source of their Britishness came from the father. Mm. So they all had 
like they were called John Smiths and <laughs> right. Jack Jones or whatever they were called. You know what I mean? But they were Jack Jones and John <laughs> Smith. <laughs> are, those your, are those your most British names you could think well, of? Yeah, they were, Good yeah. shout. Yeah, uh, classic. <laughs> but what, was, what was interesting about them is that during partition, the British yeah. said, you can't come here. Right. And then the Indians were like, well, we don't want you either. Mm. So it turned out that a lot of them went to, um, I'm a big geek, me, I studied, I've researched all of this. Um, a lot oh. of them went to like Australia and mm. Canada and New Zealand. Mm. Cliff Richards, one of them. No way. I think he's half one of them. Is he? Yeah. That's so, well, that's so crazy. Yeah. Do, what, I, what I found growing up a lot was, what are you? Mm. What are you? And my defense mechanism used to be, I'm a human. Yeah. Um, Cause I just couldn't, I couldn't address it when yeah. I was growing up, you know? Like whenever anyone would be like, oh yeah, but where are you from? I'd be like, earth. You know, yeah. I just kind of style it out. And I think it's really the reason I ended up in my career was, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but definitely that imposter syndrome and that sense of not fitting in yeah. is really the reason that I carved a career in a way that I would definitely get noticed. So it was burlesque in. was the first thing. Was that, am I right? It was burlesque that you first went into? I first went to IT. Right, okay. <laughs> I was such a computer nerd. Yeah. Well, this is, see, this is hashtag Asian. Yeah. So, so I bet um, your dad was buzzing with that, wasn't he? Well, he, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a doctor, so it wasn't yeah. quite right, but it was acceptable. Yeah. So I grew up in a very, very Asian household, even though my mom is British. Okay. Because my mom's family are extremely religious Catholics. Okay. And so they were were super conservative right. so almost it didn't matter that it kind of she blended. was white yeah. it was it complemented she was Asian. Strict. And he she was, was strict. strict he was strict and it was just like it was mm. almost even more asian than asian <laughs> so what it was is arts were just like a, a no so yeah. i loved ballet i love violin i mm. love dancing these are the things that i just wanted to do i loved I was just like a natural entertainer you know yeah. my kids would try and take a picture of, um, my parents would try and take a picture of me and i would just be like yeah. Naturally, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't even know I was posing, but it's just yeah. the way I was. Um, but my parents are like, no, you no doctor or a lawyer, like mm -hmm. for real. And and you have to get like a proper job. And this mm -hmm. is what, like really, really hardcore, traditional, culturally Asian values. Yeah. And so when I wanted to do art at university, it's kind of, I'll put it this way, I was strongly discouraged. Right. And I ended up getting into IT. Mm -hmm. um, but. I can't, you can't. You Did know, you enjoy when, IT? I, so I, was, I was really good at it and yeah. I am a total geek. I'm, right. a, I'm, I'm a nerd. So I did, I, I was like, hello, yeah. I did love it. Yeah. But um, I knew that I wasn't expressing myself. Yeah. Um, I once get, got sent home in my office for dressing mm -hmm. too gregariously. I mean, it just, it wasn't for me, like I wasn't destined for a corporate environment. Yeah. I wanted to express myself. And I think as a kid, when you have that much passion inside of you, yeah. you can only repress it for so long, yeah. you know? And so that's when literally around that time where I'm kind of feeling it out and I'm mm -hmm. being that good little Asian daughter, yeah. I heard about burlesque. And it was game over for me. Like that was where I was just like, Sh what, what shit. <laughs> what attracted you to doing burlesque? So very much. What actually is burlesque? I don't even know. Okay, so burlesque. I watched your show to find out. You did, which one? <laughs> Singapore Social. Oh, okay. So burlesque is, um, it's a dance form. It originated from very, very old Italian theater. Okay. Um, it involves a lingerie and it involves a strip tease, yeah. but no, not stripping per se. So it's so strip it's, tease without nudity. It's all about the tease, none of the reveal. Okay. So it's, um, and it's very feminist in that the onus is with the performer, with the woman. So oh, okay. you decide, there, you can even decide so not to take anything with, off. The power is with the woman, but it's 100%. about the tease. Okay, yeah, I get you. 100%. So it's empowering 80% of my audiences are women. Yeah. And it really just celebrates female confidence. Brilliant. Or if it's boylesque, mm. male confidence. It just celebrates that person taking control and reclaiming their bodies and their sexuality. Yeah. So it's still, as you can imagine, for a very strict Indian family, yeah. a no-go. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> but growing <laughs> well, up- I, Well, I watched that one, like, cause obviously I read your, I read, Joe sent me your bio, I read your bio, right? And then I saw, I saw your dance on Singapore Social and I was like, oof. That cart had gone down well at home. <laughs> <laughs> my parents haven't watched the show. Have they not? That, my parents watch all the reviews. Yeah. To and, and they watch all the reviews and then they scout out yeah. any criticism and they're like, told you. 
<laughs> really? A hundred percent. But uh, I think they've kind of like started to turn a corner because now the show's trending. trending yeah. And there's so much love. Yeah. They're kind of reluctantly going, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, well, we're proud of you because it's television. So yeah. it's not quite burlesque and people are enjoying it. So they kind of, but really at the start, they would like, my mum Googled me. That's how she even found out I was doing burlesque. Really? She Googled me and she found out that I wasn't in IT anymore. So that was so like- you, So you weren't living at home then? No, no. Right. No, I ran, so I ran away from UK? I ran away from home at the age of 18. Right. Yeah, I know that sounds mad if you're British, but for us as kind of Asian folk and from an Asian background, mm -hmm. running away from home at the age of 18 is mm. really young and mm. like was a really, it was a rebellious act and I almost- So were you, were you in the UK then? Yeah, so yeah. I was in the UK. Because you grew and, up there in Singapore, right? And then you came between here. Between both, yeah. yeah. Um, so really, Doing that was a, a massive rebellious act and, mm -hmm. and I just went on to just challenge my parents and everything really yeah. and it, it did hurt them It did hurt them when I was challenging them, but also We can't continue to be afraid of change as the next generation no. We have to push those boundaries because mm -hmm. sometimes those boundaries don't make sense mm -hmm. Talking about sexuality being a taboo arts being unacceptable you've got to push back yeah and it can change can be uncomfortable and change can be painful but i swear to god my entire career now i have this like complex of always wanting to make them proud yeah. to compensate for back then yeah but i know it's something that i had to do and in life someone has to be the first as well mm. yeah um so yeah but um they my, my mom googled me they thought i was still in it i ended up doing burlesque and i found burlesque because so were you doing that in singapore um so no so i started in the uk right and that's kind of what caused the controversy was i started in the uk mm -hmm. and when i went to go back to singapore and perform burlesque there i didn't realize just how many boundaries I'd be coming up against and be pushing because once over there once back home because it yeah. was like my it was really only intended to be my personal journey yeah. the reason why I was gravitated to burlesque was not necessarily because I wanted to become a burlesque performer it's because I wanted to explore myself mm -hmm. and as well growing up finding no place the vintage scene and the burlesque scene was like this this little bubble mm -hmm. that was irrespective of race or gender yeah. it was just pin up yeah and i felt like i belonged yeah yeah and I, your style is vintage anyway isn't it it is yeah i, I, I get think that so vibe. it's eclectic i think it's vintage well, you've got, yeah you've got a vintage twist with i that. have a vintage twist on it definitely. yeah i'm definitely yeah. seeing that but it's how like i felt like i fit in because mm -hmm. the vintage scene mm -hmm. is really like that and it yeah. kind of goes hand in hand with burlesque yeah, so i was yeah, gonna yeah. hear about burlesque but it gave a place for me as a biracial brown woman mm -hmm. to feel like the topic at last wasn't about my skin color and who are you or what are you yeah so this vintage look that you've you've got going on i'm guessing that's where these crazy hairstyles come from <laughs> Yeah, in part. Do That's you know the first <laughs> thing I know. When I watched you on that show, the first thing I was like, wow. <laughs> um, my hair is a thing, yeah. but it's kind of taken a life of its own. Um, but really, I guess it's just like the inside of me has always felt quite expressive and quite colorful. Yeah. And I express myself through my hair. Okay. And that's part cultural because in India, obviously, and being Asian mm -hmm. and in Singapore, like, Indian hair is just, there's so much emphasis on it. Okay. There's so much emphasis on Indian hair that we're not, you know, and we're not necessarily encouraged to do a lot of things. Yeah. You know, bleaching or dyeing. Yeah. Ah, oh, when my, even when I cut my hair. Yeah. The first time I cut my hair short was with some kitchen scissors. Yeah. My wow. parents were mental, <laughs> you know, because it was seen as so, so I think in a way it was like, a, it's a bit of a rebellious act yeah. because of that, but also it's it's who I am coming mm. through my pores into my hair. Yeah. And um, that's, yeah, that's a massive part of me. I've been so fortunate to work with an incredible company mm -hmm. called Pretty Party. Mm -hmm. um, they, were, they were responsible for some of my wackiest hair looks. Yeah, because they, because <laughs> I was thinking like, how do you even do that? Because like you'd have luminous blue and then like oh, pink all in the same. It's very high maintenance. Yeah. I kind of miss my rainbow hair. Yeah. I feel like at some like, point it look, it look, I should it bring back. It looks sick though, man. Honestly, Thank I, did. You. I did like it. <laughs> Thanks. I did like it. Yeah, I noticed immediately. Like <laughs> you could find you straight away with that hair. 
So and what's the what? So what was the company who did that? Pretty Party. Right. Okay. Yeah. So are you still working with them now? Yeah. Yeah. They're absolutely amazing. We're working on a new look. Yeah. Um, what's that? That I'm very so I'm not going to say. It's kind of like our finale. And um, it's one of my favorite looks because we've been working together over the last couple of years mm -hmm. on three looks um, that I really wanted to design to express myself. Yeah. The first one, I did a um, dress made out of hair wow. because I kind of just wanted to be ridiculous and have my like, my hair come into my hair yeah. that was my hair. Um, and then the wait second a minute, one- Wait, 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 <laughs> wheel up, right? Your hair come into your hair that, that is it was your hair. hair. Wow. <laughs> like a tiered <laughs> system of hair. And it's, seriously, so the, the dress is made out of it's hair? It's made out of hair, but it's not human hair. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that was the first look that we did. And yeah. then the second look that we did was a, I think it was like five meters. I'm not sure, I haven't measured it, but I'm pretty sure it was a five meter long wig. Wow. Um, that I wore um, <laughs> at the Oscar parties. Yeah. Um, so that was absolutely fun and that was just wild. Sick. It was just a way of expressing myself. The only bad thing about that was that I didn't realize at the time was when you're walking through a room and your hair, the end of your hair is five meters behind you. <laughs> somebody like, from the next room like Vanny, can, can stand on you like that. <laughs> so I was finding throughout the party, I kept going, Ooh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I kept going like, Ooh, right? And yeah. then, it was somebody, I would be like, excuse me, excuse me, walking yeah. through, excuse me, excuse me. Hey, you're standing on my hair. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> we'd have to kind of like walk back and it yeah, would be that, me. Yeah, that, that's a problem, that five That was a problem. Um, but the last look, the last look is gonna be, is gonna be phenomenal. So do you feel like doing that, doing the burlesque and essentially, it's almost like taking a sledgehammer to, the expectation and norm of what would typically be stereotypically projected for you by taking that huge left um, turn and doing that. So I didn't want to take a sledgehammer. I wanted to take like a tiny little nutcracker. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, the sledgehammer hammer is what made it such a struggle. Right. Um, I wanted to just take a nutcracker to it. Right. But. I but you pulled the wrong tool out of the box. I had to. Yeah. So as a woman and as an Asian woman, I grew up knowing there was something really, really wrong about not talking about certain topics yeah. and not expressing yourself Definitely. in a certain way. And it's almost like if I could have treaded softly, I would have wanted to because that would have been a less painful journey for me, mm -hmm. for my parents, for my family, mm -hmm. for my culture, for my country. Yeah. Countries from yeah. my background, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Because when you feel that much pain about feeling that repression in your own community, mm -hmm. you have a choice. Yeah. And I felt like I had no choice but to be brave. I had no choice. The, the, the sledgehammer was almost thrust upon me mm -hmm. and it's thrust upon all of us right now to make a difference. Yeah. So who's gonna take that first hit? Yeah. Someone has the to. The hardest choices, the hardest actions, always, without a doubt, always have the biggest outcome. 100%. The easy way, easy outcome. 100%. The greatest things in life are on the other yeah. side of fear. And nothing good is easy, is it? Nothing nothing good is easy apart from snacks. Yeah. Yeah. And even then there's well, consequences. Well, they're bad because you're just gonna, <laughs> you won't be putting them burlesque dresses on after too many snacks. Hey, you know what? Burlesque is about all body shapes well, and yeah, sizes. Yeah, exactly, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you when oh is that so is that how you ended up on the show then by yeah by doing burlesque over there yeah so but the, how netflix came about yeah. was a happy accident okay so i knew that i wanted to be you know when i started to kind of like get so far in my career mm -hmm. i knew i had something yeah i knew i had something burning inside me that should have come out ages ago yeah and i knew I, I know it sounds weird, but I felt like I was different and I had something that I felt like I wanted to say mm -hmm. that maybe hadn't been said before. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I wanted to travel to every single country, perform around the world, you know, push the plight mm -hmm. of of women, especially Asian women who can't express themselves, yeah. raise the profile of burlesque, yeah. represent Singapore, yeah. you know, and- You know what, I'll, I'm, I'm so glad you're saying this because when I watched that show, 
I didn't get that message from it, but I knew that this is what you was about. And hearing yeah. you say it, it's all making sense to me now. It's so mad. I haven't watched the show, but they- Have you not watched it? No, but they- You've they, not watched your own show? I've not, I never watched my own stuff, if I'm I can help like it. That. I used to watch it. Yeah. I used to watch my own stuff and I should watch my critical? own stuff. I'm super critical. I, I can't help myself. I I'm like, myself. why is your hair like this? Yeah. Why do you look I'll like a- I won't watch this. Loop? You look like a clown. Will you watch this? Fuck. I probably won't, too, to be honest. Must I? Well, you can do, yeah. <laughs> but really, I probably will. Now I'll feel like I, I might, have to. I might listen. I might listen. Yeah. That's it. Or sometimes I'll watch with it on mute. Yeah. Because I don't want to sound like a, like a toe. <laughs> um, so I'll watch and I'll go, good outfit choice. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> But Netflix came about, yeah, it was an accident. And I think when you push yourself out there, mm -hmm. eventually someone will hear about you. Mm -hmm. And that's when one of the producers called and they were like, do you want to be on this show? Now, the part of the reason I haven't watched it was kind of because when the show came out, I thought it was going to be really, really about female empowerment, what I was doing, more like a docu-series. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I realize now that docu-series may just be a posh way of saying reality TV. Yeah. And I love reality TV. I, I say, wouldn't say I, I think, wanted to be I in it, necessarily. you came necessarily. across as a, a really genuine nice Did I? person. Oh, Definitely. thank you. 100%. Oh, you came across a bit thanks. wacky, but you came across as a very nice person. That's mildly accurate. Yeah. I'd say that's strongly accurate. Yeah, well, yeah. I read you well then, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think the benefit of then talking about it afterwards yeah. is people hear about who the person is behind the character. Yeah. And I think that's really important yeah. to me is to talk about the show, but also know that at the end of the day, these are highly edited shows and yeah. everyone on that show has that. a story. Yeah. And they need they need the conflict, they need the drama, they need yeah. to push a narrative, don't they? I mean, how yeah. well did you know them before? So I, I knew Paul. Yeah, I can tell that. Um, I can knew, tell that's your mate. Yeah, I knew Paul. I and I got to know Nicole on the show. Yeah. Ever I, um and I I kind of had had a few chats with Vinny, but really aside from Paul, it was like new territory. But Singapore's really small. Yeah. So it's kind of like the village and everyone has seen everyone so you and everyone would knows have everyone. Seen them about... I've seen these guys about. Yeah. Would I have had the balls to talk to them? No. Yeah. I feel like is it that your bark is bigger than your bite? Yeah. I feel like I look like I could be like, yeah. yeah. But in real life, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, so oh. like I wouldn't, I didn't have the ball to talk <laughs> yeah. to these people. I'm like, they're way too cool for me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something stupid. Yeah. I'll just be in the background, just the one in the corner, like <laughs> the weirdo, do you know what I mean? Um, but it was nice getting to know them on the show. It yeah. was tough because you're thrust into very intimate situations yeah. and you're encouraged. Well, that, film, that, that must've been filmed pre-COVID, right? Or were they COVID Pre-COVID, COVID, yeah, pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah. And we were encouraged to talk about really personal things as well yeah. with people that you're getting to know can be super awkward. Mm -hmm. But I think we've come out of that stronger and you know, you've got to look at it and say it's entertainment. Yeah. And if it's entertaining people, you're doing your job. And yeah. I'm just so grateful that it's had this massive resurgence as a result of Bling Empire. Yeah. And the love is, is you know, yeah, I mean, that's how that amazing. I, Cause it, it, I only heard about it recently and right. it, it has been out for about, Six months a year? It's been out like a year. Right. Just over a year. Right. I feel like just a bit longer than a year. Um, but it's only really gone that, mad the Bling now. Because of Blink Empire. Right. Cause well, because only... of Blink Empire in the US. Right. When it first came out, it was it it had kind of reached that Asian so it was big in Asia, base, right. But really, when it started to go crazy... When the Americans got has, on it. ...has been when the Americans got it. And literally in the last five days, my life has come... I swear to God, it's no exaggeration when I say my life has completely changed. Just just in the last five days. Explain that to me then. Um, so you can no longer... I mean, I was letting things slide yeah. in terms of the DM on Reds. Yeah. It's a losing battle now. <laughs> <laughs> and also... I really, I know it's gonna sound super, super cheesy, yeah. but I love my fan base and my following. Mm -hmm. And I really see it like a community yeah. and like a family. And I really like to take the time to reply to everyone and say, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like if you send me a DM, I wanna say thank you. If yeah. you comment on my post, I wanna say thank you because we're never too big yeah. to say thank you yeah, to the 100%. people that put us there. But now- And it's, it's quick, important. isn't it? It's in and out, like, yeah, right? like fame, fame trends come yeah, and go Yeah, so be me. so grateful. Yeah. Like I'm so grateful of where I am, but there comes a point and it's kind of come to a point now. 
you want to say thank you to everyone, but you've got to do it en masse yeah. in something like this yeah. because you just can't reply. You don't have the time in the day to reply to everyone. Yeah. Like in the last 24 hours, 2 a.m.s now are trying to say thank you on Twitter. Yeah. I'll get people saying, it's my birthday today. Can you follow me back or can you tweet me? I can't keep up with it. Yeah. So it's That's unbelievable. Good so you've seen, you've seen a big, since Bling Empire took off and now that sort of, pushed yeah. Singapore social right yeah. back up again. You've yeah. seen a good research of it. I'm glad for it because it's not just about me. It's not just about my show. It's mm -hmm. about Asians being represented in yeah. the mainstream. Yeah. And especially Asians of different colours. It's that's not what, just that's about... That's what I wanted to ask you. So, you know, um, in, in the show, you were sort of seeing a guy called Tim. <clears throat> One of the things that you were saying was that in the show, you were saying he's from such a different culture. How would that work out at home? Mm -hmm but your home is of a mixed culture anyway. Yeah. So I was I was wondering how how does that work then? So like, if you were to marry someone who <laughs> was, so if you were to marry a strict English Catholic boy, yeah. would that be welcomed at home? Anything would be welcomed at home, but, except I still feel like we're pushing the envelope when it, become, or like when it comes to LGBTQ plus. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but because, you know, my dad, at the end of the day, my dad married my mum. Yeah. And so, and in terms of that, my dad being a psychiatrist as well, I think he's just really, you know, my family are luckily open-minded when it comes to that, to be honest with you. Okay, Because they good. can't say anything else. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm quite grateful and fortunate of that. So are they looking to do a season two? Ah, <laughs> so, um, I mean, if people keep watching and if people keep tweeting about mm -hmm. it and if people keep talking about it, then I see no reason why that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, would I do a season two? Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I, w I would have said no. If you'd asked me a couple of months ago, I would have said no. Why? Um, because it's reality TV and I feel like... I. We're such multifaceted individuals mm -hmm. and what I'm doing, I'd like to have just such an important kind of message behind it that I feel like it needs to be taken sensitively. Yeah. And whilst I love talking about my hair and my appearance and crazy quirky stuff, mm -hmm. that's not necessarily who I am. Right. Who I am is talking about, can we make a difference to young girls in India? Yeah. Can we make a difference to young girls in the UK, America mm -hmm. and worldwide? Mm -hmm. That's my passion. Yeah. And I want that passion to come across. Yeah. So for me, I didn't, want to do a season two i'll yeah. put my hand on my heart and say it was not for me but now with everything that's happening i just think it's so important that well, asians get a moment your audience, doesn't it's it? not even that it's so important that asians get a moment mm -hmm. asians are getting a moment right now yeah. we're not just getting a mo moment in a spin-off like a uh, tv show we're not getting a moment in like uh you know one crazy rich asians movie yeah. or one mulan we're getting a moment in all kinds of types of television. Yeah, yeah Asians can be in a movie. Asians yeah. can be on TV. Asians can have and a I reality think, show. I think, in, I think as well, like if you, the, like the Indian hip hop scene, yeah, is blown up massive, blowing up. And I'm, for years, I was watching that scene, thinking it was it was not credible at all. But now, like since the emergence of like the whole Gully Gang thing and oh, Divine I love that and whatnot, movie. Um, it's credible. Yeah, and it's sick. Like yeah. I'm an MC, that's what I do. Yeah. And I have to say, it's undeniably, like, the quality is is there. Right. And I, and I think that's an amazing, like, for the world stage, for, mm -hmm. for that to, to now be a thing over there. Um, I think it's just, a, it's another it's another feather in the cap of, of what's happening in Asia. But I think as well, especially if you're biracial and you've experienced both cultures, we were kind of raised on if you can get into Hollywood, yeah. that's that's the goal. Yeah. If you get get into Hollywood, that's the goal. Yeah. And if you don't make it in Hollywood, yeah. try Bollywood. Yeah. And I think that's on us. Mm -hmm. But also, we were made to feel that way. Mm -hmm. And now I will put my hand on heart and say I 100% would choose Bollywood and then Hollywood. Yeah. 100%. And I think part of doing season two or pushing your career or accepting what you've got and using your voices, yeah. being proud mm -hmm. and putting your hand on your heart and say, you know what, what we've got is great. 
our hip hop scene is great. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of our industry. Yeah. I'm proud of Bollywood. Yeah. You know, we are just as good, if not better in many fields mm -hmm. and we should support who we are, yeah. you know? 100%. And I think it needs to go that way almost for it to even out. Mm -hmm. I think we need to push and keep doing what we're doing and amplify our Asian voices of all colors mm -hmm. even harder and then it can then it can even out yeah. and we'll come to that place in the end where we're all equal yeah. but right now it's our time do you think the stereotypes of indian women are changing or do you think <laughs> the old-fashioned i think it depends where you are mm -hmm. for a lot of like i'm from south india like my mm -hmm. family originate from south india and there's even though it's a strong matriarchal society it doesn't the real changes aren't rippling all the way down mm -hmm. and so you kind of have this where the elite of asia is changing mm -hmm. but for people who are just struggling to get by mm -hmm. it hasn't rippled all the way down yeah and so that's why it's just so important to yeah. keep fighting even more and push that message yeah through. i think in, in for example the indian community in the uk i feel like that's certainly with like our generation it's definitely more balanced right. into, uh, that's my perception of it anyway as mm. far as um certainly like first generation born indian british indians it it feels very much more balanced but yeah looking at like my dad's family how they are they're pretty old school right in their in their approach yeah and i would say that is like where a message like yours would have the most impact because I don't think that's where it's not quite the same. Here there's a lot of there's a lot of different factors that would balance society more. Mm. Like we have a UK is very much about female equality mm. now. It's very much about LGBT equality mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. In India mm. they've not got there mm. yet, have they? So I think we've all got a long long way to go. Like mm -hmm. everyone's got just such a long way to go. But baby steps yeah. and also i think like do it with that positivity and that yeah. positive message i think you know it's really easy to become bogged down and depressed about it you know yeah. it's really easy to get intense yeah. and and super politicize everything yeah. Yeah. you know the internet's become a highly politicized place yeah massively. but i'd like to think that if you can if you can make it accessible yeah. if you can say things sensitively yeah and if you can appeal to kids as well yeah you know that's how to push the message yeah i've, I've never been a believer in like hot the hard line no you know I, you can't dress <clears throat> like this yeah and like act like a politician you know no. but i think it's important <laughs> it's important for like everyone on that like spectrum mm -hmm. of creativity or that spectrum of business i think it's important for every uh, you know a voice to come from all of us you yeah. know that serious message and also that positive playful message yeah. you know in order to make real change yeah. you've got to see somebody in on tv and go that could be my daughter mm -hmm. and she's a good person mm -hmm. she seems all right yeah so probably what she has to say is all right as well you exactly know? yeah yeah i think this hard line approach that we've certainly seen over the last five years really like mm -hmm. 26 since like the whole brexit and donald trump Whoa. And whatnot what it's, happened to the internet yeah <laughs> it's like it's super left or it's super right yeah and like there's just no common sense and i think <laughs> This is part of that. The reason, like, we built this platform mm -hmm. is to have an honest, like, place for conversation mm -hmm. that isn't hard left or hard right. It's just let's just talk some common sense and some logic. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everyone's so concerned in pushing a sound bite narrative, right? Which is so one-dimensional mm -hmm. either left or right or whatever and it's okay to be unsure as well it's, it's absolutely I mean? okay to be unsure you don't have to pick a camp you, you, you can be you can be in the middle yeah because once upon a time people were in the middle yeah you know and and you can change your mind yeah i think the other thing about the internet is and i've definitely suffered of it is the internet has a timestamp mm -hmm. that is screenshotable yeah and immediately once you've said something or once you've looked one way mm -hmm. you can't look another way yeah but he, humans grow yeah you know people you grow you and learn you, change. you become and yeah, what you thought two years ago was cool but it might not be now not so cool now so, <laughs> this is the thing like i think everyone and 
everyone is so quick to say, oh, but you said this and yeah. that's your lie. Yeah, yeah. Not, it's not really, it's just what I said then. Yeah. It's what I thought in them fleeting moments yeah. of writing something and pressing send. But it does make us, it does make you think before you type. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It does make you think. But does it not just water us down to have no opinion and then be like it can some be difficult. beige society? It of, can be really difficult because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing. Yeah. But I think that be brave. So on yeah, my I mean, Twitter right? account, I've noticed that I, I mean, if I, I mean, I'm not going to advise people to do this, but if you scroll back on my Twitter account, I'm a lot more out, I'm a, I'm a lot more outspoken. Right. And I've noticed that the stuff that I will, a personal opinion wise, is war, I'm watering it down a lot more. Don't let that happen. Because I'm, because it's so easy to like, be then pushed into it. And obviously we're selling music, that's what we do. So it's like, right. It's so easy to then be put into a particular box that it makes me feel like, you know what, I don't even need to say that on this account. Hmm. I don't need to say that here. See, that to me is really sad. It is sad. Because I think the minute that we stop doing that, we no longer need politics to censor as we're censoring mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. But I'm saying, I mean, that's what I've noticed. I mean, that's me being honest, saying I've noticed yeah. within myself that I'm choosing, if I've, if I've got something to say, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big statement. It could just be something throwaway, but I'm... I'm second guessing thinking. Oh, 100%. Is this for the internet? Whoa, yeah. Do you know I what do I mean? that myself. So even in burlesque, even in burlesque, which is female empowerment and embracing your bodies, mm -hmm. I think as my audience has grown mm -hmm. and as my fan base is growing, mm -hmm. I, I'm even thinking to myself, is this too raunchy? Mm. Is this too raunchy? Can you believe that? I'm mm. thinking to myself, like, is this too raunchy? But I think it's a fine line between being responsible because you are as a, you can't help it you know you have to be responsible when yeah. you have a wider audience the more audience you the more responsible you kind of have to be exactly but also to know that you're not everyone's like you're not responsible for everyone mm -hmm. you know and and you have to be yourself and you have to be authentic mm -hmm. and um you can't you can't worry about who's looking at your stuff you just have to yeah. you have to say stuff that feels feels right feels yeah. honest to you yeah you know yeah 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 it's crazy isn't it it's crazy Soki, thank you so much for this thank you I've so really much i really enjoyed this thank you me too it's been really insightful keep fighting the good fight yeah definitely hey.